the focus today is on literature review literature review how do we search literature how do we read literature and how do we write uh, the literature now what are the goals of literature review the first and most important point is it is to generate and refine your research ideas well before you have finalized your model you are obviously conducting literature searches and during those literature searches you come across different ideas different limitations in existing research different gaps in existing research and from there on you propose your own research so what the literature does here is it gives you ideas and actually refines your ideas as to what aspects of research you should look into what concepts you should study what concepts have not been studied in greater detail in existing research all this becomes possible because of literature review so literature review is not just or it does not start after you have finished your model or if you have uh, developed your model it actually starts the moment you start searching the internet for uh, ideas for your research that's all part of the literature for instance you are searching emerald or sage or springer for research papers and once you come across different research papers you look into those research paper papers and identify gaps and limitations from those research papers based on those gaps and limitations you propose your own model now once you get to that particular model to achieve the objective of model building you actually did conduct a significant amount of literature review and that will become part of your introduction your literature your discussion your theoretical contribution when you are actually writing your own thesis or your paper now it does what it does is it helps you demonstrate your familiarity with the body of knowledge so you get to know the concepts you get to know what is available you get to know what are the limitations you get to know what theories have been used you get to know what contributions have people made you get to know how to write literature so you get to know a lot of different things that you might not be familiar with when conducting a literature review it shows the development of previous research as to what has been done and then you can position your own research for instance i found a research on csr and organizational performance that stated that there is a positive relationship between variables i found another relationship that found that csr negatively relates with organizational performance this gave me a thought that there is still inconclusive evidence as to how csr relates to organizational performance now i position my research on this context on this premise on this argument that there is need for further research into the relationship so while you are conducting your literature review you have to look what has been done in previous research and you have to be critical in order to be critical you can't just keep reading and put putting those things in into your mind without taking notes or storing information so it's always a good idea to have an excel sheet ready and put all your comments all your ideas as to what variables were studied what were the contributions of existing research what were the limitations that were identified what were the results of the studies into a single excel sheet that you can later use for your own literature review discussion or any part of the thesis as well it helps integrate summarize what is known in a given area unless or until you go for your literature review you won't be able to create a concise summary as to what is available what are the agreements or disagreements in the literature what key questions have been answered and what key questions have been asked from future researchers so literature review will help you get yourself a proper direction what are different types of literature there is a popular literature there is scholarly literature popular literature addressed to general audience whereas scholarly literature is addressed to specialized audience usually primary source of information and it's almost always secondary source of information in the popular literature for instance the newspapers we read 
फाइनेंशियल टाइम्स गार्डियन वॉल स्ट्रीट जर्नल इकोनॉमिस्ट टाइम्स एंड स्कॉलरली लिटरेचर इज पब्लिश इन द जर्नल फॉर एग्जाम्पल जर्नल ऑफ इकोनॉमिक लिटरेचर जर्नल ऑफ इकोनोमेट्रिक्स कॉपरेट सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड इन्वायरमेंटल मैनेजमेंट सोशल इंडिकेटर्स रिसर्च लीडरशिप एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल डिवेलपमेंट जर्नल और एनी अदर जर्नल Now, how do you search effectively? There is a detailed video available on the channel. Actually, three or four. They'll be in the description as well. But we'll briefly discuss here as well. So, how do you search effectively? First, start browsing, but do not limit your browsing to one single database, and do not browse unnecessary websites. Do not. go for general literature go for scholarly literature that is published in peer reviewed databases again databases like emerald sage springer science direct this store and wiley taylor and francis keyword searching whenever you are interested in a topic identify the keywords relevant to the topic and that keywords also include the synonyms that might be used for a particular topic for instance for corporate social responsibility we also use the terms business social responsibility sustainability or corporate sustainability or just social responsibility as well so whenever you are searching you need to find out are there any synonyms to the particular concept So these are the online databases that you should search. Now, you, once or uh, these websites allow the users to search using boolean operators or wildcard characters. For example, and or or the wildcard characters like asterisk. You can use them with Mendeley as well. I will be looking at different databases in a minute. so your basic search strategy what is your basic search strategy you begin by stating your research topic or question so what is your research topic or question but in this actually will guide the information that you filter if something is not relevant to your research topic or question you will obviously negate that particular paper identify the important concepts relevant to your topic what important concepts are relevant to your topic you will get to filter out the important concepts as you go along and keep reading about the main topic brainstorm to create list of words look at the keywords that have that existing research papers have used look if they have mentioned that there are any synonyms to these keywords choose a subject approach that is determine which discipline or disciplines are likely to have literature on your topic so you have to identify that okay this particular topic is relevant to this discipline and will be available in this particular database or this particular journal for example social responsibility is linked to marketing related literature or marketing so you will find social responsibility in marketing journals labor or other similar topics may be related to economics so you will find these topics in detail in economic related journals use boolean operators and wild cards because they will improve the results do search through appropriate databases do not just go here and there and search any databases that you find because if you read bad you will out, your output will also be bad and once you are searching for in a particular database if they've got any search instructions do follow those instructions if they've got a particular search expression or their particular grammar for their search do follow that every database if they've got any they will obviously be listed on their website view the results modify the search if required and try the same search with another da- database for example you have searched emerald now search springer then search taylor and francis now how do you read critically this is particularly important your reading should be very critical it should not be just reading so what do we mean by critical reading you need to have a conversation with the paper you need to read in depth 
you need to identify why a particular concept is mentioned in the introduction or why a particular phrase is mentioned in the, in the introduction. The phrases that we normally come across in the introduction of the paper are more or less related to the limitations, contributions of existing research or limitations of existing research and contribution of your research. The theory that might be used. Why this research is important? The whole aspect of why is more or less found in the introduction. This will help you identify why a particular research should be done or how you would write this why aspect in your own research paper. So read with intent and take notes how other people have or how other researchers have written. What arguments is the paper making? Why are they important? Do you agree? Why or not? Why not? You will build onto your own justification. You will build these arguments. You might agree with a particular statement. You might disagree with a particular statement. But this will happen only when you start reading. And once you are through maybe 10 or 15 papers, you will be asking, well, this actually this statement is contradicting or this statement is contradicting the other statement by made by another author. So what are the critical distinctions? How do you determine that you have read critically? Who is, who is speaking versus the ideas they express? So you will have to look, look, look into who is obviously to, to, to whom the paper relates? Who wrote the paper? Where was it published? What ideas did they express? You have to look whether this is this is a particular fact or this requires a certain amount of interpretation. Interpretations may differ from people to people, person to person. I might have a different interpretation of corporations following social responsibility, while another person might have different interpretations. But these interpretations would change and if these if these interpretation or if certain thing is mentioned in the form of facts obviously then the interpretation of different people will be same are there any contradictions in existing research paper for example i read one paper in which there was a positive impact of a leadership style while the same leadership style was found to have a negative impact in the other paper so i'll have to look what settings was this particular leadership style studied in and why could there be any contradictions and how I can use these contradictions to formulate my own research questions. How ideas relate with each other. You have to find out how different ideas, how different concepts are related with each other. Not just how they are related with each other. Why are they related with each other? Because this why is your theoretical contribution in the end. Do they complement each other? They might contradict each other. But they might also complement each other. One argument may lead to another argument. How do you get through a journal article? It is very easy to get discouraged by technical jargon, mathematics and or econometrics in an academic paper or analysis because something it, it is we, we do we all have this fear of statistics numbers. So we might be discouraged don't be discouraged you can usually understand the key points of the paper even without any background so even if you do not have special background particular to that topic but you might be interested in a particular topic or you want to have or you want to read about a particular topic you can still understand the research paper what are the helpful tips Write down the unfamiliar terminologies and look it up. For example, if, I, if you do not understand a particular concept, write down and look for definition. Go to Google and write what is sustainability, for example, if you are reading a paper on sustainability. Read the introduction and conclusions first. So you know or you have a general idea as to why this research was important and what were the outcomes of this research. Obviously, always take note. Now, trust the peer review process. The math is usually right. Now, sometimes uh, this might not be applicable to all, but sometimes we do think that, okay, this math or this statistical analysis has got certain flaws. 
But what we need to do is we need to trust the peer review process. And if the paper is published in a good journal, then obviously the statistical analysis will be right. It is very important that do not get discouraged and you should keep reading. Eventually you will get to know the ideas. Eventually everything will become clear. Eventually the author will explain every single point. Write an abstract in your own word. If you want to develop your understanding, if you want to develop your ability to write, once you have read the paper, write an abstract in your own word, a general summary of the paper. How do you identify the author's argument? The following are questions you should ask yourself while reading a journal article. What questions is the asker, uh, author asking? What what research questions are posed by the researcher? And do the researcher propose any answers to them? Obviously, once the research questions are asked, hypotheses will be proposed in quantitative research. In order to support those hypotheses, the author will or would have explained a particular direction of relationship. More or less in every business research, there is a certain amount of direction to the hypothesis. So those questions or those hypotheses or the literature pertinent to those hypotheses will give you an idea as to what could be the possible answer to these questions. You have to identify and this will primarily be in the introduction section. It is very important that you read the introduction section again and again of a paper. If, you, if this paper is particularly relevant to your study. So you would identify how would you write your own introduction. This will help you identify in what ways the study improved upon previous research. What were the limitations of previous research? How the gaps were identified? How the gaps were proposed? And what are the contributions of this research? How does the proposed answer compare with that provided by the previous research? So once you are proposing, you actually draft a comparison as to what was previously done and what this research actually proposes to do. What theories will be used or are used in existing research to explain the relationships? What empirical evidence are you looking for? How you are going to search for answers for your research questions? Do you have any assumptions while you are obviously uh, reading a paper or did the author had any assumption? This will help you identify if you have any assumptions while uh, making your reasoning. Evaluate the author argument. How do you evaluate it? Does the argument fit a particular theoretical lens? The data used is adequate. The methodology used is adequate. Did the author check all the assumptions pertinent to the data? The, th the, the analysis, is it clearly explained? Does it make sense? Does the conclusion are in light of the research objectives? Overall, how is the paper presented? Does the paper make sense? Obviously, if you go for good journals, you will find all these things in the paper. Now, how do you write, go about writing literature review? Before going into the detail as to how to write a literature review, since now we know how to read it, how to take notes, what to note. As soon as you start reading, once you are through five, six papers and you have written the summaries, the abstract, structure your literature review for instance if you've got one iv one dv one mediator so your literature review should start by for instance, for instance the individual conceptualization of the iv as to what the iv is what are the definitions of our, this particular variable for example i'm interested in studying three variables servant leadership career satisfaction and life satisfaction so the structure of my literature review should be like this. It should start with servant leadership. And in this you should write what, how, why. What is this? What is this? How it affects the organization or the individuals for instance 
since it's a more or less a higher order construct servant leadership is about leader so leaders more or less affect the whole organization so it how it affects the organizations why is it important for the organizations so your servant leadership or when you are writing about servant leadership you should focus on answering these three questions same when you are writing about career satisfaction same when you are writing about life satisfaction so you can mention how it affects how life satisfaction affects both the organizations and the individual same is the case for career satisfaction same is the case for servant leadership the next step is servant leadership and life satisfaction now you are expressing the relationship between variables and here you should explain any previous research on the relationship any theories that have been used or could be used to explain the relationship now how do you find these theory once you have downloaded the papers you put them in mendeley and you search just simply write the word theory and you will come across the papers that have used a particular theory to explain the relationship of a particular variable read those theories and identify whether you can use that particular theory to explain these relationships now it all comes down to reading read as much as you can now if there are any previous researches do they report any contradictions what theories could be used or are used to explain the relationship why is this a relationship important so this is how you write about relationships next servant leadership and career satisfaction same goes for this relationship same we have to write about these things in this particular relationship as well and finally career satisfaction and life satisfaction but there is one other relationship that you might be interested in studying mediating role of career satisfaction how do you write about mediating role you build an argument saying ib influences mb and mb leads to db so this is how you build on to your literature on mediating variable or in total this is how you build on to your or write about your literature first you discuss the variables individually and while you are discussing the variables individually you write about these things obviously this list is not exhausted as you start reading you will get to know there could be other things that you could have mentioned or you could mention and then finally the mediating goal so this is how you can structure a research literature if 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 it's a simple research with one independent one dependent and one mediating goal now remember that literature reviews are organized around ideas not the sources so you have to correlate structure and format your ideas you have to create a flow between your ideas and for instance what we have done in this case is the ideas flow or the structure is the first to identify or understand the concept of variables and once you understand the concepts then you are in a better position to identify how these concepts are interrelated with each other identify shared themes ideas or issues that the literature sources now again the the whole point of putting these sections subsections is to is to bring together the ideas 
so when you are discussing servant leadership and life satisfaction you are only discussing servant leadership and life satisfaction and you are discussing how these two concepts actually relate with each other is there an idea that seems to be missing do you think that there might be a certain idea there might be a certain philosophy or there might be a certain concept that might be missing or for instance a certain relationship might be missing between the variables obviously this will come when you are reading so you get to or you will and this will help you develop your explicit gaps in research do you like the theoretical approach in the literature the theories that have been used in existing literature but your liking or disliking will only begin once you have read enough on the theoretical approaches once you have read enough on what theories are available in the literature unless or until you read enough or you haven't read enough you won't be able to build a particular concept or a particular notion as to which theory can be utilized and which theory can't be utilized what are the trends in literature or the debates in de and or developments this will obviously help you position your own research as well for example do not write literature or do not conduct research on anything on which there is very little readership or there very there is very little debate develop an overall thesis statement that includes your perspective on material that you have reviewed so develop an overall idea or over, overall statement a concise comprehensive statement as to what you have read how do you think you are going to take it forward obviously this does not mean that the the, the literature once once you are writing or once you have started writing it you cannot change your ideas that's the reason i've been saying this all along read first read as much as possible before you start writing but again while you are reading try to take notes so that you can build on to those arguments build on to those ideas that you have written so this is how you write your literature review or focus on your literature review for example let's do a little search on a database let's say we want to search emerald so we go to emerald and let's say i am interested in entrepreneurial leadership so what i've got is i've got research on entrepreneurial leadership i'm interested in empirical research something that has used questionnaires so once you start reading you even by the looking at the title you will understand this is an empirical research or not a good idea could be look at the abstract and see if they have used a questionnaire or what type of study it is and if you are already interested in identifying or starting uh, empirical research based on questionnaires only download those papers so same approach can be used in for any other research uh, database for example let's do tnf online taylor and francis let's say i type about summary and let's say this 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 by the look of it the title shows that it, this is an empirical study so just click on it and your university will have an access and you can easily download it so this is how you can search these databases you can look at the and read their abstract and see if this paper interests you or not look for latest research in order to have a clear idea